say good evening to those of you that are joining us tonight, whether you're joining us on Facebook Live or tomorrow you're going to pick up. As you know, uh, until December, we were dealing with, the, in the book of Hebrews, looking at the men and the women of faith and to see what we can learn from them when they went through their troubles, difficulties, challenges, because that's the time God really, you can tell whether people know God or not. So we're looking at, we call it the, the alls of faith. We find the men and the women of faith. And the alls of fame is in America. Alls of faith is in the Bible. Amen. Okay? Anybody can become a part of the alls of faith. And you are. So tonight, Brother Jim, one of our pastoral team members, he's going to be sharing with us. Yes. Praise God. On, we're going to focus, he's going to focus tonight on Barack. Amen. Not Obama, but the one in the Bible. Amen. So, Brother Jim, will you please come? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Do you have any questions? Will you please stop? <laughs> if you have any questions, please put it on the line as he's talking. And evangelist Arby will collect it and put it out. Okay? God bless you. Brother God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Uh, greetings in the name of Amen. Jesus. Greetings, Brother Jim. Okay. Marilyn, I have a Bible here. You know, and, uh, writing is so small, I may have difficulties. <laughs> Thank you. So tonight, we're going to, I'm going to be looking at Barak. One of the uh, people mentioned in the Hall of Fame. Of fame. <laughs> I'm just teasing over Bishop. <laughs> yeah, this is whatever you hear about. Jim, can I also welcome oh, um, Fabiola? Fabiola and. and where to? Where to? We to. Way to. Yeah. Way to. They're here. Um, the first we have met, and I would like to say welcome to both of you. God bless you. Nushka, good to see you. Thank you, Bishop. Yes. Oh, yes. Great to see you again. It's the first time I've seen you this year. <laughs> yeah. Now, as um, our Bishop said, we're not talking about uh, the former President Barack Obama. But, uh, you know, it's interesting that he has that name. Because in Hebrew, you know, it has several meanings. And one of the meanings is actually lightning. Mm. Right? Mm. But also, a second meaning in Hebrew is praise, worship. And there's also a third meaning, and that is to bless in adoration. Yes. Now, it's interesting that, you know, one word has so many meanings, but it's the same in English. You know, just as an example, the word watch, W-A-T-C-H, is spelled the same no matter how it's used. It could be to watch someone, you know, to watch a child, to take care of a child. It could be a watch out, you know, danger. It could be a watch on my hand. Wow. It could be a, a soldier taking the first watch. So we're not quite sure where this Barak falls in. But I believe you worship. Amen. Because of the context in which uh, it arose. Yeah, it arose. And it carries the meaning of um, yeah, kneeling in reverence, mm. right? And literally, you know, bending as you know, in, in a you know, showing reverence. Yeah. yeah. Now, when we talk about Barak, it actually begin. It's beginning in verse one when we talk about Ehud. Right, but that actually Ehud was from chapter three. Okay. Uh, the very end of chapter three. Judges. Oh. Uh, Judges, sorry. Yeah, Judges chapter three. <laughs> yeah, at the very end, right, just two verses I want to read for you. Follow me, Ehud ordered. And this was him talking to um, you know his men. For the Lord has given Moab, your enemy, into your hands. So they followed him down and took possession of the fords of the Jordan that led to Moab. They allowed no one to cross over. 
At that time, they struck down about 10,000 Moabites, all vigorous and strong men. Not one escaped. And I want you to remember that. Not one escaped. Amen. That day, Moab was subject to Israel, and the land had peace 80 years. Now we come to Judges chapter 4. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud <coughs> was dead. So they had peace for 40 years. Ehud died, and then they turned back to idolatry. And the Lord basically sold them in captivity. Yeah, into captivity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, into the hand of Jabin, king of, of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor. Uh, and the captain of his host was Sisera. There are really three main characters in this. Right? Uh, there is and you always, whenever you hear about Barak, you hear about Deborah. Right? And then there is Sisera. So those three are the three main characters in this part of the story. Now what we want to find out is how you know, did Barak end up in the Hall of Fame? Because really, uh, you know, throughout the Bible, you know, we don't hear a lot about him. You know, it's not like, you know, he's a Joshua. It's not like he's a King David, right? So how did he end up in there? What made him worthy to be in the Hall of Fame? And that's one of the things we're going to work out. So in the time of the judges, yeah, Israel drifted away from God as we know, right? And the Canaans oppressed them for 20 years. And this was uh, Jabin and his uh, Sisera, his, his general, basically, for 20 years. And God called up Deborah, a wise and holy woman, right, to be a judge right, and a prophetess over the Jews. And this, although this is not about Deborah, but she played a pivotal part in it. Amen. Deborah is the only female judge in the judges. Of the, of the 12 judges, she's the only female one. So anyway, Deborah summoned Barak. Right? And you tell him that, you know, God has asked him you know, to bring two tribes together. The tribe of Zebulun and the tribe of Naphtali. And to go to Mount Tabor. Now, I'm going to read a little bit, a few verses. Right? And Deborah, a prophetess and the wife of Lapidoth, she oh, judges. Four verse. Okay. Sorry, uh, Judges 4, verse 4. Yeah? And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm, palm tree of Deborah between Ramoth and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinom, out of Kadesh, Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee 10,000 men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun. So that was the call. Amen. Now, just to step back a bit, um, the King Jabin and his general Sisera, they basically ran havoc for 20 years mm -hmm. over the Israelites. Right. Right. They had 900 chariots of iron. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want to compare that with today, that is like having 900 
challenger tanks, yeah, right? And your opponent has swords and arrows and uh, spears. <laughs> They're gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> the tanks are just going to roll right over them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, when Barak was called up, right? I'm quite sure you know, you know he must and he was told take ten thousand men, right? Now if you have nine hundred chariots of iron, right? Yeah, they have a multitude in their army. Mm -hmm. that, that wasn't their army. That's right. That was just you know the, the, chariot, the artillery, yeah. the chariots, mm -hmm. right? And they're going to face chariots with swords, spears, bow and arrows. Just imagine today, you know, if you went up against a tank. And you got your rifle, and you got your handgun. Pop, 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 pop. It's going to run straight over you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, anyway, he heeded the call and went. Yeah, as uh, she had called him. Right. So, in verse eight, and Barak said unto her, "If thou will go with me, then I will go. But if thou will not go with me, then I will not go." Interesting. Mm. Uh, I've heard it said that you know um, it's because he was afraid mm. is the reason why he mm. said that. But I don't think so. Mm. And if we, uh, if we I'll, I'll read it for you. Right? You go with me, I will go. But if you don't go, I won't. Mm -hmm. There's a very similar verse that we read in Exodus 33, 15. Moses and God. Mm -hmm. Where Moses said to God, mm -hmm. Then Moses said to him, If your present go not does us. not go with us, mm -hmm. then don't send it. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't want to go. Right. Amen. Now, was Moses was it afraid? Oh. No. He valued the presence of God. Yeah. And I think that is what happened with Barak. I say it, it was the prophetess, the woman of God. Right? Remember, at this point, he had no ark. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. He had nothing with him. Yeah. But he desired the presence of God. The he presence of God him. dwell with the woman of God. She was the one who prophesied to him. Yes. Yeah. So that's why he said uh, he will only go if, she's going. if she goes with him. Mm -hmm. So she agrees to go with him. Mm -hmm. right? But she also prophesied that because of what he said, because he asked her to go with him, right? And although they will have the victory, the glory will not go to him. It will go to a woman. And uh, we'll, um, so in verse nine, she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the, the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Mm -hmm. And Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Mm -hmm. Now, having gone up to Kadesh now, and they go to Mount Tabor, right? Sisera heard about it, mm -hmm. right? So in verse 12, and they showed sister that Barak, the son of Abinom, was gone up to Mount Tabor. Mm -hmm. And sister gathered all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him. Mm -hmm. right? In verse 10, we now have, sorry, verse 14. Deborah is now there with them, with the 10,000 and with Barak. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, 
For this is the day which the Lord has delivered Sisera yes, into thine hand. Hallelujah. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. You remember um, when I uh, read at the beginning, back with Ehud, mm. right? And Ehud, Ehud ordered, I'm oh, sorry, follow me, Ehud ordered, for the Lord has given Moab your enemy into your hands. Mm. What did Deborah just say? Mm. Yeah, up, get up and go, because the Lord has gone out before you. verse 14 and the Lord discomfited Sisera mm -hmm. and all his chariots mm -hmm. and all his hosts with the edge of the sword before Barak so that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled on his feet mm -hmm. so things got so bad that he his chariot of iron was no good it was nobody. It was, it was not of any use to him. Mm -mm. Right? So he got down off his chariot and started running away. Yeah. And this is where Deborah had prophesied you know, that the glory wouldn't go to Barak, but it would go to a woman. Mm -hmm. And this is actually well worth reading in full. So from verse 16, but Barak pursued after the chariots and after the chapter host. Four, verse 16. Yeah, chapter 4, verse 16. Yeah. And all the hosts of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword. Remember what I read when I said I wanted to come back to it? He <coughs> would not one escape. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. Alright, so he just. And all the hosts of Sisera fell up on the edge of the sword, mm. and there was not one right. man left. Mm. Confirming the prophecy. Mm. Yeah. Howbeit, Sisera fled away mm. on his feet to the tent of Jael, mm. the wife of Hamer, the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, the king, and Hazor, and the house of Hamer, the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me. Fear not. You know, don't be afraid. You know, come in. Yeah. And obviously by this time, you know, he, he's been running. Yeah. Right? yeah. So he's tired. Yeah. Right? And he here it's a friendly face because tired, there's peace first. between uh, yeah. you know, their tribe, her yeah. husband, mm. and King Jabin. And this was King Jabin's general mm. coming. So anyway, so he turned in onto her into the tent, and she covered him with a mantle, with a blanket, right? and he said to her, "Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, because obviously he's thirsty. Mm -hmm. He's been running for some time, yeah. and being hotly pursued, all his men had died. Mm -hmm. right? For I am thirsty." And she opened the bottle of milk. And gave him drink and covered him. Yeah. And again he said unto her, Stand at the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man doth come in to inquire of thee, and say, Is there any man here? Thou shalt say, No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Jael, Haber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his into his temples and fastened it to the ground mm -hmm. for he was fast asleep and weary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so What lesson can we learn from this? Mm -hmm. right? 
One is not always to judge until we actually are able to see what happens at the end. Mm -hmm. As I said, like, you know, I've read it where people have judged Barak and said that you know, he was spineless and he was weak. Mm -hmm. right? That's why he asked for, quote, a woman to go with him. Mm -hmm. right? But when you compare that to Moses, right? Moses said, without the presence of God, yeah. he doesn't want to go. Mm -hmm. yeah, with Barak, right. without the presence, presence of God, God, that is not weakness. Mm -hmm. That is strength. Yeah. Amen. Right? Mm. Now, you know, I mentioned that you know, um, there was 10,000 of them, but the other side had 900 chariots, chariots plus of the iron, mm. plus, the plus the host. Right? That is one of the biggest victories because not only were they outnumbered, they were outmatched. Mm. Right? You cannot send a man with a handgun uh, up against a tank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not at all. Give me yeah. Mm. yeah, you just can't do it. No. No? No. And I think because it was such a momentous victory, mm. it was one of the reasons why he entered into the Hall of Fame. Right? Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is just no way. They, they stood no chance whatsoever. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But he actually went and did it. But he had the foresight to take the presence of God with him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So, just to sum this up, before I'm going to open this out to questions, to some questions. Um, Barak is only mentioned in three places in the Bible. Right? Obviously, in the Judges, in Judges 4. Um, he's also mentioned by Samuel. You know, in Samuel, 1 Samuel 12, verse 11, yeah, uh, with Samuel narrating. And I'll just read it for you. Then the Lord sent Jubal Baal, Barak, Jephthah, and Samuel, and he delivered you. Delivered you from the hands of your enemies all around you, so that you live in safety. And the only other time he's mentioned is in Hebrews 11, verse 32, when he's mentioning the people in the Hall of Fame. Barak. Was a great general. Mm -hmm. And the reason why he was a great general was two things. He took the presence of God with him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. And he faced insurmountable, I mean, insurmountable force. Yeah. Right? You know, it's not that dissimilar to um, you know, Gideon, mm -hmm. you know, who had a force that you know, they literally covered the face of the earth. Right? But they overcame because they took God with them. Yeah. Barak overcame because he took God with him. And the reason why I say he... Be, I, I don't think, you know, we, we can't quite imagine it, but, you know, um, you know a set of tanks and people <laughs> with handguns. <laughs> you know... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is how it would have looked. Yeah. In our days, this is how it looked. And they still went, and they still fought, and they destroyed the enemy. Mm -hmm. So, God's in verse twenty-three. God sub subdued on that day. What chapter is that the same? Oh, yeah, man, sorry, yeah. Chapter four, twenty-three. <laughs> God subdued. Yeah. Subdue on that day, Jabin the king of the Canaanites. Thank you, Bishop. Children of the These pages are so thin I can hardly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Bishop. Yeah. On that day, subdue Jabin the king of Canaan before the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin, king of Canaan, until they had destroyed King Jabin 
of Canaan. So it wasn't just the army mm. that was sent to them that got wiped out. They also wiped out the kingdom that King Jacob ruled over. Mm. So, I suppose when you read it, you know, um, to begin with, we don't always see that last bit there. It wasn't just the army. It was the kingdom mm. that King Jacob ruled over. Amen. All of it they took. And after this, uh, you know, they actually wrote a song. And it's always called the song of Deborah. Mm. Right? But it said, Then sang Deborah and Barak. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Yes? Oh. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it wasn't, yeah, you know, read it everywhere. It's Deborah's song. But read what it says in the Bible. Yeah? Oh, but, yeah. Then sang Deborah. What verse are reading, Brother Jimbo? Chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 1. Chapter 5, verse 1. And it's a rapping verse. It's, a rapping <laughs> yeah. verse. it's yeah. the first rap song I've seen in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> you can look at it and rap it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Go ahead, Brother Jimbo. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, you know, in wrapping up, right, yeah. the reason why this man is in the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. he didn't just defeat an army, he defeated a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah, Do you have any, any questions? Yeah, yeah. Um, was she married to him? No, no, no. No, she was married to um, someone else. In... Um, Tells you in verse. No, she was married to. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, and Deborah, yeah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidus. Yeah, yeah, she just yeah in verse four, chapter four, she judged Israel at that time. Yeah, she was a prophetess. Yeah, but you know, um, as a prophetess, you know, everyone would actually know her. Um, so you know where. Yeah, um, when uh, she sent for Barack, I'm quite sure you know he was you know more likely quaking in his boots. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, an example of this would be uh, you know, when Samuel, yeah, you on. know, you know, well basically it's when he went, house. yeah, well, in fact when he went anywhere, people quaked, <laughs> you know, and they would ask, you know, do you come in peace? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So when the prophet summoned you, you know, it's going to be something important. Right. You didn't read chapter 22 in this week, this part of the whole story, brother. Sorry. Chapter sorry. No, sorry. Verse 22 in, 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 in verse chapter, chapter 4. Chapter verse 4, 22. Verse 22. What does it say? Yeah. And, and behold, as Barak persuaded Syria, Jehel came out to meet him and said <laughs> and to him, Come, I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. <laughs> Can you imagine he's going inside to go show his man that he probably feel like he's sleeping, but uh, he killed him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was just thinking, I mean, you know, uh, when I when I read that bit, that she really drove a tent yeah, because she it's, it's, it you, you know, oh, it, oh, oh. you know, so through his temple, through the other temple and pinned him to the ground. Yeah. So you know, she must have really uh, <laughs> That must have been a very, very long <laughs> in yes. <that> thing. <laughs> Yes, a very last long yeah. tent peg. Mm. Very long peg. Any other observations? Mm. He could have said, we killed him, you know, but he said, let me show you. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. just said, oh, we killed him inside. Come on, yes. we killed him inside. He said, let me show He's you. dead. But he said, come, let me show you him. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I think this is something also we can remember what God said to Moses. Stand still and see the salvation, salvation of God. Of so the Egyptians that you have seen today, you yeah. see them no, see more. no more. Amen. Amen. When he talked about an host, 900 chariots, he's saying a lot mm. about the kingdom. Mm. And even Gideon did show. Yeah. 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 Gideon is a host, as Brother Jim said. But um, many times we are looking for help. Mm. I notice God only took. 10,000 yeah. from two tribes. That's right. Yeah. He didn't call the other tribes. Mm -hmm. And many times we'll be wanting to see this come, that come, this come, that come. And if they don't come, 
we are afraid. Mm -hmm. When it says on holes, it means a whole lot of people. Yeah. You can't number them. Yeah. And these are the, and if you, def you, def you could, if they defeated the host, every one of them died. But the king was still alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The king could always go and mobilize. Mm -hmm. But therefore, we need to deal. And I've, I've listened to people pray many times. And uh, they have <coughs> never attacked the enemy. They're just praying. They're not attacking. Whenever uh, you look at even Jesus' is prayer, it was a game. It, 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 prayer is such a thing. It's a, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the Christians must become violent, spiritually yes. violent. Yes. Amen. It's a violent, take it by force. Yeah. And we are not violent. Yeah. Uh, we don't even realize that we're in warfare right now. Mm. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. We're in warfare right yeah. now. And that's why many of us don't come to war. You, Gideon blew a trumpet. Mm. And people gathered around him. Yeah. And we need to know that we're, we're in serious time. Yeah. Warfare. Yeah. And we must not. The, the psalmist got it right. Just go and host should they come against me? Most of us would be fearful. He said, Go and host, would they camp against me? I will not fear. So, we, what can we learn? We learn that we must not look at the circumstances and the people who are fighting against us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in them. Go ahead, Brother So, any. Uh, what? Turn up your volume. Turn up your volume. So I was going to say because I wasn't too sure which um, what the similarities of Barak and Gideon. Gideon. Oh. Yeah, because I was thinking obviously there was there always seems to be a, there always seems to be a fear factor mm -hmm. um, that's running through all the different people that God called in yeah. the book of Judges. Mm. But um, but one thing is certain is how they have recognized the presence of God mm -hmm. and recognizing that they can't do anything without the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Even though mm. man has a lot of might, they had all the chariots and everything, so everything. all the might of flesh was with them. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it was the people that put their sole trust in the God, God in the presence of God. And obviously, because the past and knowing that what God had done for them, for Israel, they can look back and say, you know what, mm. Moses said, I can't go unless God goes with me. Yeah. 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 And it's, it seems to be the same all the way through. Tread in that fog. That, that mm. Run through. through. Mm. I think Gideon's after this one, isn't it? Mm. Oh, yeah. A bit further on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't actually look at the earlier verses, so I just quickly looked. But it just goes to show that even though we can feel fear, mm. it doesn't mean that we're not going to be, be strong in mm. with Christ with us. So it's it's um, moving towards God despite of what we feel like. Mm -hmm. Because um, at the end of the day, there's always God always has a master plan mm. to take us over. <laughs> And to defeat the enemy. Amen. Yeah. That's yeah. trying to defeat us. Yeah. And, Amen. You know, really, that is, that is faith. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. In the face of, you know, insurmountable odds, <laughs> uh -huh. right? You still go forward. Amen. Amen. And David, uh, there's a verse that David re wrote. He said, At what time I am afraid? Mm. Yeah. I Fear agree. should move us to trust, not in ourselves, mm -hmm. but in God. Yeah. And hence, you could hear David saying, one time I am afraid I will trust in thee. Mm -hmm. And then here in, in Psalms 23, do I walk through the valley of the, the valley. Okay. Now, most of us ball and fear. I was telling someone that before I became a Christian, I could not go into my, I was um, hindered from going into my mother's room at six in the morning, 12 in the afternoon and six in the evening. And any time I go in there, I incur the wrath of my mother. Especially when I hear her praying and telling God things about me. I didn't like it at all because I feared God. But after I became a Christian, Ma and I used to pray a lot. And, you know, Ma can sing, but she always wants to sing a song. 
before we pray. You know, all the old folks, Sister Barbara, they always want us to sing a song before we pray. Even some of our people, whenever they're asked to pray, they would start, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, that's a quote. They have to quote it. And uh, more always like, and uh, I, I didn't know those songs in the church in you know, or the, the, the um, redemption. But I found this one one day. It says, trouble, trouble, trouble. So I, I just put a, 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 a tune to it and started to sing. And Ma stopped me. She said, stop it right now. Stop it. Now, why do you have to sing about trouble, trouble, trouble? <laughs> sing victory, victory, victory. <laughs> and, uh, from that time, the second thing she taught me, because I used to cry a lot when I was praying. And one night, she stopped me. She said, why do you cry so much when you're praying and she said stop it <laughs> you must know the God you're serving mm -hmm. and she explained it to me I can't explain it away but I think that my tear up dry dry <laughs> up you know what but it, it's interesting that when we're afraid the only person we should turn to and when we see the enemies like Barak and Gideon we should always remember turn to God and if you, what time I am afraid, hear what he said, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in thee. And though I walk through the valley, and most of us want to escape it. We want the, the challenges. We have challenges. Challenges of divorce, challenge, challenge of job loss, redundancy, challenges of all sorts, doctor, not all of these things, telling us this and that and also, uh, we need to know that our economy does not is not based yeah. on what the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Mm -hmm. Our God said the gold is mine, the silver yes. is mine. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't pray and call our gold in. <laughs> and if you, if you ever go into a country where demon, uh, demons operate in England very much, you know, yeah. but we don't recognize them. But you go into a country where people are casting out demons. And if you ever hear them tell you what they do to family members, you know, but we tend to see them and just laugh and say that it's not a laughing matter. But we need to attack, pray attacking prayer. Yes. Amen. War for your prayer. Amen. Amen. And, and yes. when we pray war for your prayer, it means that we rec you can't pray it unless you are recognize what you're up against. Yeah. yeah. You will not jump through the window. If there is not a fire, oh. if there is a fire, you will jump. You, know, you will run if you see a fire. And if we don't recognize danger, even when our kids left church and all the things, we will not fight. And we need to become warriors for God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. War for your prayer. Yes. Bless the Lord. Any other observations or any questions? No. Sister Barbara, you have a question. Mm -hmm. no. uh, I thought one was coming out. Well, just one rallying cry. Again from chapter 4, verse 14. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up! For this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Amen. Is not the Lord gone? Out before you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jim. Thank you, Brother Jim. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you, Brother Jim. Praise the Lord. How many of us know that the Lord has gone out ahead of us? Amen. Two people agree. Amen. The rest of you are not so sure. But if you believe that the Lord, come on, church. You're, you and I are not alone. I believe. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. There is a verse in um, Zephaniah chapter 3. Praise God. Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah is in the Old Testament. Praise be to God. Zephaniah. Zephaniah is after Habakkuk. I believe. Mm -hmm. Some book from before Haggai. And it's before Haggai. 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 
I never forget one morning when I was praying. I think I can't remember if I was reading in this passage and the Lord told me to sing. Sing, O daughters of Zion, rejoice and be glad. It's chapter 3, I believe it says, praise God. In that day it shall be said in Jerusalem, fear thou not, praise God. And chapter 3, verse 16. In that day it shall be said. And the Lord just told me to sing. And I said, sing what? Mm -hmm. so the, the, I, this passage was open before me. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear thou not. And to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. For the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will say, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. And hallelujah. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. And I go up to verse 14. Sing, O daughters of Zion. And I just sang that song that morning. And you'll be surprised. God wants us to know he is saying to us, fear thou not. Amen. Amen. How many of you tonight will leave here and you can look at the devil and laugh at the devil? Aye, aye, aye. Oh, God is gone out. Greater is he that is in you. Come on. Amen. 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 Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. For the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will say, he'll rejoice over thee with joy. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He will rest in his love and he will joy over thee with singing. Oh Hallelujah. Powerful verse. Amen. I recorded that verse just within weeks after I recorded it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's, to me, it's not a song. It's something the Lord gave me. Praise be to God. I didn't know who to I, I didn't know who to put the author down as. <laughs> I just I think I put it down as the Bible. Praise God. Believers, stand with me. Most of us, sometimes as Christians, we always talk about challenges. But we don't talk about mountaintop experiences. Did anybody hear what I said? Yes, Bishop. Uh, someone a guy told me on the plane traveling from, we were coming from Cleveland, Tennessee, on our way to Georgia. And I shared with him something I read in Miles Monroe. And Miles Monroe told us that he went to, I can't remember which African country. And he said when he went there, after he finished his lecture, his teachings for the whatever given time, he was asked by one of the government officials if he would like to go and visit the chief, a chief in the village. And he conceded, went. And he said the chief told him a story how the farmer found a lion cub. One day he's a sheep farmer. And he said he found the lion cub. And he looked around, he was frightened. He didn't see the lion, but he saw the cub. Mm -hmm. He went, he ran away with his sheep and he went back the evening and he looked and the cub was there, but no lion. So he took the cub and he took it home, fed the cub until the cub grew up to be a lion. And he said, one day after the cub became a big lion, they were out with his sheep and including the lion. But the lion acted like a sheep. Instead of saying, oh, the lion, the bear, like the sheep. <laughs> and the lion, the, whilst they were there, a lion came over the mountain and started to roar. And the sheep ran, the farmer ran, and even the lion ran. Mm -hmm. The lion ran. And I, I was so, I was I, on the plane before, I had to show to this white lady. I said, lady, I've never seen anything as fascinating as this. Will you read it for me, please? 
Now, you don't mind? And she read it. And she gave me the message of Pastor Macon's story. So I shared it with this African guy. The guy was the, the director of the whole of Barclays Bank Affair in the United States. And he turned to me, and after he read the story, it's called The Lion came back a long time after again, and the, 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 the lion that was with the farmer looked and see the lion roaring. And he tried to roar like the lion, but he was going like a sheep. And he kept trying, 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 until eventually he started to sound like the lion. And he looked at the sheep as to say, I gotta go. And he left, and he went right over, and he and the lion went all the way until they couldn't see the lion no more. And there's a lion in us. Amen. Amen. There's a lion in us. And I told the African guy, the guy said to me, I don't go to church because when I go there, the people are always talking about problems. He said, he said they never talk about victory. victory. He said he don't go. He's a businessman. He's a rich man. And he can't go to church to hear people all the time talking. They never talk about, they're not shouting. Every one of them in their, their testimony have problems. <laughs> he said he that. And that's the reason why. So most of us look at the challenges, mm -hmm. but in that day it shall be said, O Jerusalem, mm -hmm. fear thou not, for the Lord thy God, whatever challenges you face, remember God is with you. Amen. For those of you who have joined us, praise God. Remember, hallelujah, the pandemic is over. We are at church now, and we are here to pray. And we're here to seek God's face, to learn. And as different people take on the challenge to give us insight into the halls of fame and the halls of faith, men and women of faith, and we can learn from them. We're no different. No. God doesn't call super duper whoopers. He called people. He, he used this, the weak things to confound the strong. The foolish things to confound the wise. Yes. God wants to use you in your situation. Amen. I want you to know that the city belongs to God. Amen. And it belongs to you. Amen. The people Amen. in the city belongs to God. Amen. Belongs to you. Amen. The gold is the Lord. Amen. The silver is the Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> it belongs to us. Yes. Let's lift our hands in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you. Let's yes, pray Lord, together. we give a praise. We declare your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, mighty over God. Our lives, over our we homes. give a praise, Jehovah we Jireh. Your name, that you are Hallelujah. God. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, our God, Hallelujah. Glory to your name, mighty God. Lord, victory belongs to you, mighty God. Lord, we have the victory already. And we Lord, thank we you, Lord, you for victory over our defeat. enemies. We thank we you, mighty God. Hallelujah. For all that you have done for us, we Lord. For those who are on Facebook, Lord. Father, ah, mighty God, help them to realize the that they got the victory because we, we accept Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because they've accepted you, mighty God. Hallelujah, Lord, as we walk with you and as we live in your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. We shall be joyful. Hallelujah. We are victorious. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord that we got the victory. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory with your name, mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 We have the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We crumple and paralyze every plans of the enemy right now. Lord, we thank you that they're already gone ahead of us and destroy whatever plans the enemy set over our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for divine healing Jesus. over our body in right now. In the name of glory, Jesus Christ. Glory, glory, Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Baba, your name, mighty God. You are worthy. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, Lord. 
Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. The blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for victory, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we'll march. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we are worthy. You 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 Lord, we, we give a praise, Lord. Lord. We give a praise. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. Thank you for your blood, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we pray for souls tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. For those Glory. who are going to bereavement Glory. at this moment, Glory. Lord, we put them before Glory. you. Glory. Lord, we put marriages Hallelujah. before you right Glory. now. Glory. Hallelujah, mighty God. Here we Glory. cry out to you right now. Hallelujah. Open defeated. up your eyes right we now, mighty God. Suicide spirit. Hallelujah. Spirit. We In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We declare tonight Hallelujah. that you have given us authority yes, over all Lord. endeavors. Yes, Whatever form they come in, over all devils, in the name of Jesus, over all devils and all manner of diseases, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 glory to God. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. As we close, I want to, the Lord reveal something to me a few weeks ago as we were praying. You know, I heard about the statistics at the time of the ambulance workers on strike, doctors on strike, and fire department on strike. And I said, Lord, I praise you that we are not a part of that statistic. We are not in the, in the ambulance line of waiting to go in. I said, Lord, I thank you. Cover us. I rebuke sickness from our lives. Yes. We are not, and we will not be a part of that statistic. Amen. 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 So God bless you. Have a good night. Have a victorious day. Remember, anyone come against you tomorrow, the Lord of hosts is with you. Hallelujah. Amen. The God of Jacob is your refuge. Yes. No one will send camp against you. You will not be afraid. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you again, Brother Jim, for, and uh, those of you that are not here, um, you usually come. We don't want anyone to just come to, because they are doing a presentation. But um, you talked to Minister Tess about which one of the uh, men and women of faith that you would like to choose. Brother Jim pointed out something that I've never noticed before, that Deborah was the only judge. Mm -hmm. Woman. Woman judge. Woman judge. Woman yeah. judge. Yeah. And there are quite a few judges, but Deborah was the only woman. Yeah. She yeah. made it into the halls of faith. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> Where to? I don't want you to shout because I said no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we are in this liberation yes, thing. Did. And God bless you. Amen. Thank you. God bless you for joining.